so yeah, just some thoughts on that episode. I mean, again, you, like they really kind of start to delve into the gentrification um, part and the dynamics of gentrification, the effects of gentrification, and they build all this around, you know, Kenny's house and you know Kenny's family can't afford to go to the restaurants. They can't enjoy some ice cream, um, all all that stuff. So it shows how like the local community um, cannot partake in the the good elements of, of the gentrification. I love this quote from Randy. This is from a later episode, but our, our town has only had a Whole Foods for three weeks and we already have our first gay kids. Um, I mean, that comes from a later episode, but it, it just, it's trying to say, you know, so much about like the whole, if you, if you have a Whole Foods, you're, you're this accepting, um, you know, uh, 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 politically correct, um, open-minded, place and Whole Foods sort of, you know, com coming to them, deciding to come to South Park sort of reflects that. It's a, like a trophy, so to speak, of, of, of that. So yeah, Whole Foods itself um, as a chain, obviously it was bought uh, three years ago for $14 billion uh, by Mr. Bezos and Amazon, um, but they tend to uh, find themselves in food deserts and these are places you know, in a city um, where it's hard to get good food, um, you know, where it's hard to get fresh produce or organic produce, uh, or, you know, a lot of the options are, are processed or fast food. And so they tend to go into these, into these neighborhoods, but oftentimes in a lot of those neighborhoods that only have those, those options, those are people who cannot afford to actually shop at the fucking Whole Foods. Because if you've been to Whole Foods, you know it's, it's pretty expensive, okay? <laughs> Um, the, the argument, you know, that, that Whole Foods makes in this, you know, is that they're going to, um, you know, make things cheaper for people in that community because they're going to, because they bulk buy their stuff. And so people in that community will have uh, access to cheaper or more organic and healthier food that will bring jobs that the people from that community will actually get to work in the Whole Foods. Um, and that, you know, Whole Foods is a symbol of progress okay it's not no albertson's or safeway it's whole foods yeah part of the thing though that happens when you know neighborhoods get gentrified and a whole foods comes in is that um hey guess what property taxes go up when property taxes go up significantly the value of land goes up and all that stuff it's pretty it may seem like a great thing but if you're paying property taxes and your property tax bill goes up four or five grand a year that that i mean i experienced that in my hometown um you know which is a coastal town in maine you know where people from massachusetts started buying up all all the property you literally you would be on the ocean side of the main road and and your your property value like doubled that's great but like your tax bill also doubled so for families who had like you know inherited and had land there for generations you know they couldn't afford their tax bill so they had to sell their property often at a loss in many ways like m they owed more on it you know i mean it's just bad it was just not good okay um what also happens you know in, around a whole foods hey you see this in eugene you know uh, uh more pricey little boutique shops start to come about you know uh boutique ice cream and all, all that stuff the food starts to become way too expensive and guess what a bunch of whites move into the neighborhoods you know and that's kind of that's kind of the thing and a lot of times they're not hiring from that community um, and that's one of the big critiques of, of Whole Foods itself so um, and, and in gentrification in, in general you know is like the you know oh let's build all this stuff but who gets to actually partake in the economic success and enjoy those things are not necessarily the people that are um, whose community are being invaded by by these businesses and by these developments. All right, so we're going to kind of um, hang it up there um, and we'll watch a few more episodes and then we'll come back uh, for our next class. We'll continue to talk through some of these concepts um, and we'll watch the episode Safe Space um, and we'll watch a couple more, a, a couple more episodes um, and yeah, we'll get on with, we'll get on with, uh, we'll get on with it. Um, anyways. I love this season. I think it's very interesting. 
um, season that you know gets us thinking a little bit. The next episode we're going to watch is uh, Safe Space, so we're going to talk um, a little bit about that, about the internet as a safe space, um, you know, and elements of body shaming and and all that stuff. And um, they introduced the evil character of reality. So that will be for next class. We'll start we'll we'll start off with with a little bit of that, and then you should be watching a couple more episodes. Um, from, from the season to get us to our finale, Truth in Advertising, and I believe, um, what is it, uh, PC Principal Final, um, Final Justice, PC Principal's Final Justice, which is the conclusion to the season, okay, so anyways, that's just a little introduction to political correctness and gentrification, um, we'll start talking about promoted content and all that stuff, and we'll kind of weave this whole narrative in um, to you know this this season of, of South Park. So, anyways, um, we'll see you the next class. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying up and staying safe. Real Dr. Dre. This is South Park and Society. Cine three three ninety nine. All right. I'm I'm out like the gout. I'll check you on the flip. Peace. <laughs>